Hey guys, it's Dave here once again with another video on the space industry and Rocket Lab. Thanks for tuning in as always. And uh, today I really wanted to talk about StarShield, this big announcement that we just had from SpaceX the other day. I'd like to talk about uh, what it means for the rest of the industry, how it could impact other space companies like Rocket Lab or even Planet Labs or a few others. Uh, I really didn't see this one coming and a lot of people on the Twitterverse who know about the industry seem to think it's a pretty big deal. So I just wanted to talk about that, give you my thoughts, and hopefully down in the comments you can let me know what you think about this. Is it much ado about nothing or are we actually seeing a, a major shift in the industry? Before we get to that though, please hit like and subscribe down below to help out the channel. And uh, there's also a link to our Discord if you're interested down in the description below where we discuss stocks and investing in greater detail. I was actually just discussing options trade a lot this morning. I made a options trade on Rocket Lab. I sold a put and uh, made some nice premiums there. I was talking about it with a few of the guys. Great place to discuss ideas. So with that out of the way, uh, let's dive over to this Starshield announcement and what it means for the rest of the industry. So here's a quick screenshot from the announcement page, uh, just taking a look at what was announced. Basically, Starshield leverages SpaceX's Starlink technology and launch capability to support national security efforts. While Starlink is designed for consumer and commercial use, Starshield is designed for government use with an initial focus on three areas. So uh, that wasn't too shocking to me. I mean, sure, they might want to divide up their commercial and consumer offerings from their defense and government offerings, try to keep things more secure on the defense side. Uh, to me, that makes sense. Wasn't really shocked by that. But uh, this is what surprised me a bit more right here is Earth observation. So under the three areas, we have Earth observation, communications, and hosted payloads. Obviously, Starlink right now is really communication and internet is where that one falls. But now we're seeing Earth observation capabilities added in here. Um, which is basically imaging and it could be radio, synthetic aperture radio, or just uh, visual wavelength imaging. Um, there's a lot of companies already playing in this space. SpaceX has not yet. And to my knowledge, their version one Starlink satellite does not contain any sort of imaging instruments, any cameras taking images of the earth. So obviously their new satellites will have to have some new hardware for this and also hosted payloads where Starshield builds satellite buses to support the most demanding customer payload missions. Uh, that was a bit surprising too, not as shocking to me as the whole earth observation thing, but basically, yeah, if you want your own payload going on a satellite bus, they can make that for you. It's kind of like how you can use the Photon spacecraft as a platform to add more equipment and tools and measurement devices, communications devices, whatever you want to do with it. Similar thing here with, with the bus from Starlink. So uh, this announcement really caught me off guard. Obviously, it's great for them going after government and defense customers. Uh, those are always high value missions. They always pay their bills on time. Uh, this Earth observation is, to me, a big game changer in the entire industry because up until this point, Starlink was only going after internet and only going after consumers, really. I mean, they, they did have some government contracts. Obviously, the governments and defense organizations feel more comfortable having a separate entity that they do business with as opposed to just purchasing the consumer offering from SpaceX. Uh, so I wanted to look a little bit at satellites by sector and how the space industry divides up as a whole um, in terms of services. So communications is by far the largest. Obviously, this is where Starlink would fall right now with 63%. Number two now is Earth observation at 22%. And then we have some other items like technology development, GPS, navigation, uh, some less than 1% items like t technology demonstrators, Earth science, space observation, and then space science down at the bottom. So really, the, the bulk of it is these two items here, the top two, communications and Earth observation. And now SpaceX is going to have constellations in both these areas. Um, so I was a little concerned by that because I was kind of thinking in the back of my mind, well, when Rocket Lab 
sends their own space assets up in the future and kind of offers services. Maybe they'll go into Earth observation. That way they're not a direct competitor with SpaceX. They don't have to worry about Starlink, completely different verticals, different services, and there's no competition there. Um, but now with SpaceX moving into Earth observation as well, uh, we're running out of areas a little bit where they don't have to worry about competing with SpaceX. Looking a bit further into the Earth observation market size, we can see that in 2021 it was worth about 7.7 .7 billion. So not tiny, uh, not huge yet though. Um, the, the TAM is not massive there, but uh, it's expected to continue growing very rapidly with a compound annual growth rate of 7% and reaching over 14 billion by 2030. Uh, companies already in this area who may be concerned about this is obviously Airbus is a big one, um, Lockheed Martin, and then uh, Boeing. Uh, there's obviously Planet Labs I mentioned is a big player, and th there's a lot of others already in the area. Um, and you can further divide this up based on the market application. So you can have within imaging, you can have defense, weather, location-based services, energy, or other. Um, at least right now, Starshield, we're only really looking at government and defense. So, so it's, uh, in terms of imaging, it's really a offering for governments and defense, not consumers or companies. It's not really B2C right now. So um, in terms of offering Earth observation services or owning their own observation satellites, these other companies like Planet Labs or, you know, if Rocket Lab were to go that way in the future, not saying they will, um, they could still, you know, play in some of these other areas, at least right now, and not have to compete directly with Starshield potentially, but it's something to consider for sure that, um, you know, once you have the hardware available for defense, it's, it's not as hard really to move into these other sections of the market. <laughs> so I was thinking about this and I thought, you know, what would Elrond of Rivendell think of this? And he said, SpaceX is moving into Earth observation. Our list of markets grows thin. <laughs> I just, I don't know. I love that meme. So I found it pretty funny. Um, if you're not familiar with Lord of the Rings, that'll probably go right over your head. But I um, thought that was a funny one. So we have um, just a screenshot of what Planet Labs does. This is one I keep meaning to look into more closely and I haven't yet. But they're really all about Earth observation as far as I'm aware. So really imaging I believe they have some radar offerings as well, so not only the visual spectrum, but other spectrums that can see through weather, and uh, and 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 they could potentially be impacted by this announcement, right? If you're trying to compete with the big boys now, like SpaceX, who has all this money and are able to launch thousands of satellites into orbit, it could be tough. Sure enough, this is a five-day chart of Planet Lab stock, and we can see a massive drop over the last couple days. I'm not saying for sure this is due to the Starshield announcement, because the, the overall markets have not been kind the last day, or at least today anyway. So... Uh, might not all be because of this announcement, but it could play a factor. So yeah, I really just wanted to ask what you guys think. Do you think this announcement is a, a big deal for the whole industry? Is it a bummer for Rocket Lab that there's less potential segments that they could go into without having to compete directly with SpaceX? Uh, are you worried for Planet Labs or Airbus or Lockheed Martin or any of these other players in the space industry? Uh, it does seem like it makes a lot of sense from SpaceX's point of view to go after those government and defense customers clearly the demand is rising for earth imaging i've been saying that for a while especially with the ukraine situation more and more extreme weather events that need to be monitored really i don't see earth observation going anywhere anytime soon and the demand for it is likely only to expand uh, where do you think rocket lab will land when they start owning their own space assets and operating them their cell themselves as a service uh, do you think communications, imaging, maybe some kind of GPS or maybe other lines of business? And who do you think their customers will be? Are they going to shoot for uh, business to business? Are they going to try to do projects for governments and defense or go straight to consumer like SpaceX did with Starlink? Personally, I don't think they're going to go straight to consumer. I think if anything, they're going to provide these services to other businesses 
or governments. I think taking on the task of trying to deal directly with the end consumer is just a little too much and uh, not worth the hassle for them. Maybe playing in the communication space would make sense because it's such a big market, 60 plus percent of all satellites are related to communications, but maybe they work for specific telecom, specific companies in terms of doing their communications and broadcasting for them, as opposed to dealing straight with the end consumer. That could be a potential lane they could go for. They could still go for earth imaging and deal with uh, other companies directly as opposed to dealing with governments and defense. They could shoot for that sort of thing in terms of weather or energy along those lines. If you did make it to the end of this video and you haven't subscribed already, please hit subscribe. It'll really help out the channel and uh, I'll look out for your comments down below. I'm really interested to hear what you guys have to say on this one. I'll see you guys next time. Hope you have a good week. Bye for now.